We're going to talk about how to be creative, or if you're not creative, get off the stage. But you know, before Steve, I, we began this, the, the, when the, we use the word stage a lot, and, and it's okay, because we're mm -hmm. talking about communicating. But communication's more than a stage in an audience. It's life. It's, it's, it's having meals together around a table. So the principles we're giving to you aren't principles to help you to be a better speaker. They're right. principles to help you be a better communicator. Right. And there's a difference between the two of them. Yeah. And we really want everybody to understand, wherever you are, it's the stage. You're, That's you're, right. You're, you're, wherever you are, you're, you're trying to influence somebody, add value to somebody, help somebody. So we, we, we use the word stage, but go bigger than that. Go, go much broader than that. So let's talk, about, let's talk about communicating and how do you gather your material? How do, how do you gather your material? How do you uh, uh, prepare it? How, how do you write it? Because, you know, people see you, when you come out on stage, it's the finished product. Yeah. So let's talk oh, about, they have no let's idea. talk, no, they, they, yeah. they don't have all the, the amount of time. Let's talk about that. Because you and I both know that preparation is right. going to make it either happen or not happen when you're right. on stage. So I built an entire career and I'm still use the same techniques. All of my comedy, has been done as an observationist. It's something that I observe that I give you a very left-handed take of, or I give you my exasperated moment of that observation. I built a career on being exasperated. I can't believe this happened. <laughs> this, yes. And it's something that I observe that everyone else sees, you know, to, my success has always been that I'm talking about something that everybody relate to. Even if it's a current event, it's got to be something that nobody could miss. Like when the world opens back up, there's going to be coronavirus jokes. The comedians are going to write them. And who won't know the subject? I mean, it's coronavirus. Now, guess what? Somebody who's going to be in the audience ain't going to laugh because they had it and it didn't work out that well for them and they're not going to think it's funny at all. That's... Comedy is a very funny thing. But, but most of the takeaway that I come from material, so when I get a piece of material, um, see, the one that I want to say, I'm not sure if this is the, okay, here we go. <sighs> here we go. <laughs> there was some accidents at a certain theme park that had, whales in it. And you know, the name of the whale was Killer Whales. Okay. The surprise of anything happening with the name Killer attached to it is beyond me. This is an observation I made. So we're at a theme park and there's this animal and we, his name is a Killer Whale. So everything that happens after that, wipe the surprise off your face. Cause <laughs> He's you, a killer. <laughs> it just, he told you what he is. You <laughs> named him that. It, this dude, that's what he does. So I take, I take this obvious thing and I create an observation to make people go, okay, I never really looked at it like that. And then I start building yeah. on it. Yeah. What happens? What happened that day? You know, they was dangling the fish. Was that the day where he decided, I don't want just that fish. I want that whole <laughs> arm. You know, I don't know what that day was. I don't know if he just got tired of doing the tricks that day. Getting up on his tail. Maybe he didn't feel like that today. I, I don't know what, but something clicked and he did what you, what you told him he was going to do. <laughs> That's an observation, but it's a very famous observation that everybody can relate to. I don't, I don't try to create the wheel. I don't try to sure. reinvent something. I go straight down the middle. Let's grab something everybody can talk about. Uh, so if you're a motivational speaker, everybody, two things everybody wants to be, successful and happy. I don't know nobody that don't want them two things right there. Okay, cool. Why am I trying to invent something else? Oh, I know you want to have a higher, deeper, uh, spiritual uh, connectivity to the universe. Ah, oh, don't, don't, don't. I just want to be happy and successful. Oh, I want to reach your third level of awareness. 
consciousness and bring out your ozone feeling of metamorphite. No, no, hey, hey, dog, hey, dog. I just want to watch TV and laugh. That's all I want to do. Once I got that, <laughs> that's where I lock in and stay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't try to be any more than 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 it calls for. And once I get that piece of material, then I start working all the angles. And I put it together. And that's how I wrote material for 35 years, man, of just writing material a lot over there. I've watched things that impact me. You know, and like I said earlier in one of the other sessions, I don't talk about stuff that's unrelatable to my audience. I take all the rich boy moments I've had. Those are not on the table. I got, I got no rich boy jokes. You know, I'm, I'm not going to miss. And so, you know, it resonates better with people. Yeah. People understand it better, and I, I, I think you become that. But that's the basics of how I, I, I write material. 